Praise be Jesus and Mary. And today's gospel passage from Matthew chapter 16, we heard Peter's confession of faith in Jesus as the Son of God. Then Jesus' explanation that this confession was possible only through a grace received from the Father, having revealed it you know, to Peter. And finally, we heard Jesus' solemn pronouncement, making Peter the rock upon which his church will be built, thus designating him as the head of the apostolic college, his visible head in the church, his vicar here on earth, the institution of the papacy. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. The Catechism explains, the Lord made Simon alone, whom he named Peter, the rock of his church. He gave him the keys of his church and instituted him shepherd of the whole flock. So just as the local bishop is the source of unity in any diocese, the bishop of Rome, the pope, is the source of unity for Christians the world over. Without the pope, there would be no such unity. There's an ancient saying, ubi Petrus, ibi ecclesia, ibi Deus. Where Peter is, there is the church, there is God. Faithful Christians of every age have always held the Bishop of Rome in the highest esteem. And the saints especially are known for this, their attachment, their loyalty to the Holy Father, and their special love for him. St. Catherine of Siena is a good example of that. She referred to the Pope as the sweet Christ on earth. St. Jose Maria Escriva reminds us of this simple, essential duty as Catholics. Your deepest love, he says, your greatest esteem, your most heartfelt veneration, your most complete obedience, and your warmest affection have also to be shown towards the Vicar of Christ on earth, towards the Pope. We Catholics should consider that after God and the Most Holy Virgin, our Mother, the Holy Father comes next in the hierarchy of love and authority. It's particularly important in today's you know, world in the church today you know, to continue to look to the Holy Father with great love and respect and the spirit of obedience. Jesus posed the question to his apostles, but who do you say that I am? There was probably some moments of silence on the part of the apostles until finally Simon Peter responded, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So Peter responded for the other apostles. He responded for the whole church throughout the ages. He responded for you and for me. To the, our Lord's question, who do people say that the Son of Man is? Who do people think I am? And as we heard in the gospel passage with the, the apostles' responses, knowing what others were saying about Jesus, there are, there are countless responses to that today. That simple question, who is Jesus? Some might have the correct response to that question. Others know. In today's world, if there was a poll taken, who is Jesus? Most people probably would get the answer you know, wrong. So it was true for 
our, the apostles at the time this question was first posed, and it's still true today. Many people are either not sure who Jesus really is, or they're simply mistaken. It's the duty of the church and of each of our members, you and I, members of the church, to teach others who Jesus really is, that he is Lord, God, Savior, Redeemer, King, that he alone is the way and the truth and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. He's not on a par with other prophets of the past or of the present. So Peter got it right by a special revelation from the Father. It was a grace to know who Christ is and to believe in him. The church has it right, inheriting, you could say, that faith. Of course, it goes back to, see, Our Lady herself, you know, mother of the church, the virgin most faithful. And the church continues to get it right. We'll always have the correct response. If Jesus asked you today, right now, not others, not what others thought of him, but he, if he asked you, just you, the question, who do you say that I am? How would you respond? Without any hesitation, without any need for further consideration, your response should be the same as Peter's. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In this age of doubt, unbelief, confusion, and error concerning God and the things of God, you and I as professed Christians must be courageous in giving witness to the truth about Christ to the truth who is Christ, who alone sets men free. In our union with Christ's vicar on earth, you know, the Pope will ensure that we always keep the faith, the one true faith. Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now in prayer.